Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to cover some of the land biomes of the world. And in this video, I will cover the desert, rainforest, taiga, deciduous forest, grasslands, savanna, and the tundra. Science, in this video, you will learn about the biome called desert. Although most people think of the Earth's deserts as wasteland, there is a large number of animals and plants that have adapted to the harsh conditions of a desert. In fact, one-sixth of the Earth's population live in desert regions. But what is a desert? Deserts cover more than one-fifth of the Earth's land, and they are found on every continent. A place that receives less than 10 inches, or 25 centimeters, of rain per year is considered a desert. If you take a look at this map of the Earth, you can locate areas that are deserts. The Sahara Desert is here, the Gobi Desert is found here, Arctic Polar, the Great Victorian, to name a few. Many deserts are dry and hot, but there are cold deserts as well. The Sahara Desert in Northern Africa is the largest hot desert in the world and reaches temperatures up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius during the day. But some deserts are cold, like the Gobi Desert in Asia and the desert on the continent of Antarctica. Desert animals have adapted ways to help either keep them cool and use less water. For example, camels can go for days without food and water. Many desert animals are nocturnal, coming out to hunt only at night in order to avoid the sun. Some animals, like this tortoise, will spend much of their time underground in a burrow. Other desert animals have adaptations to help keep them warm and survive in cold temperatures. This polar bear has thick layers of fat and fur for insulation against the cold, and the white appearance is helpful for camouflage. The snowshoe hare has white fur in the winter and reddish brown fur in the summer, which means it is camouflaged from its pred predators for most of the year. Desert plants may have to go without water for long periods of time. Several plants have adapted by growing long roots that reach the water table underground. Other plants like cacti conserve water in order to stay alive. Plants in cold deserts grow close to the ground and close together, which helps resist the effects of cold weather and to reduce damage caused by snow and ice particles driven by the cold winds. Some plants like lichens can survive on bare rock. Plants and animals in hot deserts have to survive extreme heat. Death Valley holds the record for the hottest temperature ever recorded at 134.06 degrees Fahrenheit. Plants and animals in cold deserts have to survive extreme cold. Average temperature of the Arctic polar desert is negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. So there we go, a look at our biome called desert. Tropical rainforests are found around the equator. This biome is known for rainfall, warm temperatures year round, trees, and a huge diversity of living organisms. A tropical rainforest has trees, trees, and more trees. These trees create a canopy on top of one another. The vegetation is so dense that little light reaches the forest floor. Many of the plants in a tropical rainforest are evergreens, not deciduous. Many of these trees have very large vines. Tropical soils are deep, but they are strongly leached with large amounts of nutrients and minerals removed. This leaching causes the soil to lack many of the fundamental nutrients needed by the above ground vegetation. So how does the huge amount of vegetation exist if the soils are so depleted of nutrients? The answer lies in a very thin topsoil, made up mainly of decaying plants and animal remains. An amazing cycle exists between the huge body of vegetation above ground and this thin topsoil. As you can see from this climograph, rainfall is very high 
in a tropical rainforest and the temperature varies very little throughout the year. It rains often in the tropical rainforest. The rainforest has millions of different species of organisms. If you like insects, you will love the tropical rainforest. There are many different types of insects such as the assassin bug, a bullet ant, a longhorn beetle, and this leaf mimic katydid. Rainforests are also home to an incredible diverse range of animals and plants. Animals such as this anteater, this boa constrictor, this eagle, lots of monkeys like this howler monkey, lemurs, and very interesting frogs like this dart frog. Competition at ground level for light and food has led to some interesting evolution of plants. Some rainforest plants live on the branches of other plants or trees or even strangle large trees to fight for survival. An example of this are orchids. Orchids comprise one of the most abundant and varied flowering plant families. Orchids are especially common in moist tropical regions. Although temperate orchids usually grow in the soil, tropical orchids are more often are epiphytes, which are plants that grow on trees or other plants, but are not parasites. Epiphytes take no nutrients from the tree itself, but instead relies on nutrients from the air, falling rain, and the compost that lies on the tree branches. So there we go, a quick look at the tropical rainforest. Rain, warm temperatures, lots of flowers, plants, and animals. Oh yes, some bugs also. In this video, you will learn about the biome called the taiga. The taiga is located in the north, but falls below the tundra. The taiga is also known as the coniferous forest or the boreal forest. This biome is the world's largest land biome and it covers most of Canada, North America, and Alaska. It also covers most of Sweden, Finland, Norway, and parts of Russia. If you look at a climograph of the taiga, you will see that this biome has short, wet summers and long, cold winters. Precipitation is moderate in the taiga. It gets plenty of snow during the winter and adequate rainfall during the summer. The taiga has the lowest annual average temperature after the tundra, and it also contains permanent ice caps. The forests of the taiga are largely coniferous and contain spruce, fir, and pine trees. Coniferous trees keep their leaves throughout the winter and have needle-like leaves and this is well suited for the harsh temperatures of the taiga. The taiga also supports a relatively small range of animals due to the harshness of the climate. The taiga is home to a number of large mammals such as the moose, reindeer, and also some populations of deer. In addition, you may find gray wolf, a fox, brown bear, and occasionally a polar bear. Although the taiga has above average precipitation, the ground freezes during the winter months and the plant roots are unable to get water. The narrow needle-like structures found on the coniferous trees or its needles limit the water loss through transpiration, but also allow the plant or tree to practice photosynthesis. The shape of the evergreens also allows the snow to slide off the branches rather than pile up which can cause the branches to snap off. Some other examples of plants found in the taiga include the lichens, which are low and adapted for wind and ice and can even grow on rocks, cotton grass, which can carry out photosynthesis at very low temperatures in low light, fireweed, which is a flower that can produce up to 80,000 seeds at one time. So there we go, the taiga, a cold but nice forest. Science. In this video, you will learn about the biome called the temperate deciduous forest. The temperate deciduous forest is a beautiful biome famous for four seasons, and many of the trees in this forest lose their leaves each winter. Take a look at the deciduous forest. 
The deciduous forest can be found in the eastern half of the United States, Canada, Europe, parts of Russia, China, and Japan. The soils in the deciduous forest are very fertile. As a result, you will find broadleaf trees such as oaks, maples, beeches. You will find shrubs, herbs, and a large variety of other organisms such as insects, spiders, slugs, frogs, turtles, and salamanders. You will also find some birds like hawks, owls, and even woodpeckers. You also will find mammals there. Mammals such as white-tailed deer, raccoons, possums, black bears, and maybe even a red fox. If you take a look at the climograph for the deciduous forest, you will notice that this biome receives around 50 inches of rainfall a year and has warm summers and a moderate winter. A defining factor of this biome is four seasons. Take a look at the four seasons of a deciduous forest. The average rainfall in this forest is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Summers are between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit and winters range from zero to around 50 degrees. So there we go, a biome known for four seasons, nice animals, moderate rainfall, and beautiful trees. In this video, you will learn about temperate grasslands. Temperate grasslands are large areas of mainly grass. Trees and large shrubs are almost absent in this biome. You can find grasslands in South Africa, Hungary, Argentina, Uruguay, Russia, and the plains of Central North America. Temperatures vary greatly in grasslands throughout the year with hot summers and cold winters. Rainfall is moderate. The amount of annual rainfall influences the height of grass. Taller grasses can be found in wetter regions. Grasslands also have seasonal droughts and occasional fires. The soil of the temperate grassland is deep and dark and very fertile. This is because of the growth and decay of the grass roots. The seasonal drought, occasional rains, and grazing by large mammals prevent woody shrubs and trees from invading and becoming established. However, a few trees such as oaks and willows grow in the grassland along with flowers. Precipitation in the temperate grassland usually occurs in late spring and early summer and averages around 20 to 35 inches. Summer temperatures can be well over 100 at times, while winter temperatures can be below freezing. There's many animals found in grasslands, including gazelles, zebras, rhinos, wild horses, lions, prairie dogs, hawks, owls, snakes, and of course some insects like grasshoppers. Grasslands can be further divided into prairies and steppes. Prairies are grasslands with tall grasses, while steppes are grasslands with short grasses. Steps receive less rainfall than prairies and receive only 10 to 20 inches of rainfall a year. So there we go, the temperate grasslands, lots of grass, few trees, lots of animals, and very rich and fertile soil. Science. In this video, you will learn about the biome called the savanna. The savanna is a type of biome with large stretches of grasslands mixed with trees and shrubs. It is a mix between a tropical forest and a temperate grassland. Savannas have warm temperatures year round. There are actually two very different seasons in a savanna. A very long dry season in the winter and a very wet season in the summer. In the dry season, a savanna may receive only four inches of rain. The dry season is between December and February and has occasional fires. In the summer, it may rain often and this biome may receive up to 10 to 25 inches of rainfall. Savannas are located in Africa, Brazil, India, and Australia. The savanna we are most familiar with is the East African savanna. 
This savanna is dotted with trees and shrubs. The Serengeti Plains of Tanzania are some of the most well known. Here animals like lions, zebras, elephants, and giraffes are found. Many animals in the savanna have the ability to migrate. Many types of grasses exist in the savanna, and this biome is known for the acacia trees and baobab trees. Plants of the savanna have the ability to grow in this environment of long periods of drought. They may have long roots to reach the water table or thick bark to resist fires. Trunks that can store water and even leaves that drop during the winter to conserve water. Fires are an important part of the savanna. During the dry season, fires clear out old grasses and make way for new growth. Most of the plants will survive because they have extensive root systems which allow them to grow back quickly after a fire. So there we go, the biome called the savanna. Large animals, occasional trees, and grass. In this video, I'd like to talk about two types of tundra the Arctic tundra and the Alpine tundra. The Arctic tundra is found in North America, Asia, and Europe, and circles the Arctic Ocean and stretches southward down to the taiga. The tundra is cold and during the winter, the temperatures can drop to minus 20 or even 30 degrees Fahrenheit. In the short summer, temperatures may rise as high as 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit and this allows for the tundra to have life. The frozen soil of the tundra is called permafrost and has a frozen top layer almost all year. Plants in the tundra have a short growing season and are generally small, short plants. Examples include lichen, moss, and some shrubs. There are not trees in the tundra. There are many animals found in the tundra, including lem lemming, arctic fox, snowbirds, and a polar bear, along with grasshoppers and flies in the summer. They have adaptations to help them survive the cold. This may include a thick fur, or they may be white in color. The white color helps the animal blend in and helps prevent heat loss. The alpine tundra is a type of natural region or biome that does not contain trees because it is at a high elevation. As the latitude of a location approaches the poles, the elevation for the alpine tundra gets lower until it reaches sea level and this tundra merges with the polar tundra. The alpine tundra is found above the tree line and also does not have any trees. Because of the higher elevation, the alpine tundra has a climate and rainfall similar to the arctic tundra, cold and dry with a short growing season. Some common examples include the Himalayas, the Pyrenees, and the Rocky Mountains. The vegetation of the alpine tundra includes grasses, clumps of moss, and low-lying shrubs. Because the alpine tundra is located in various widely separated regions of the earth, there are no animal species common to all areas of the alpine tundra. However, some animals that you may find include the mountain goat, chinchilla, and yak. So there we go, two types of tundra, the arctic and the alpine tundra. Thanks for watching and Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.